I think this case took a long, long time to put together. And it seems to me that there are serious problems with this case. We're not talking about treason. We're not talking about murder. We're not talking about something that everybody agrees that if the actual crime was committed, that absolutely this person should be in jail. The debate is whether a crime has even been committed. That's Dr. Phil breaking his silence on the Trump sham trial currently taking place in New York. Welcome to NERC News, I'm Nurkish, and in an unexpected move, Dr. Phil offered his opinion on the high stakes criminal trial against Donald Trump, where he faces the unprecedented possibility of jail time for a former U.S. president. After broadcasting a two-part series on the trial, Dr. Phil said that while he doesn't know all the facts, it seems that the case has some serious problems. We have 12 people sitting in a box in New York that are deciding a case that no 12 people in American history have ever been asked to decide. And that is, should a former president of the United States and a current candidate for president of the United States go to jail? I don't know the facts of this case, so I can't give you my opinion on whether or not Donald Trump is guilty of violating some New York law or not. And I, I think that muddies the waters a whole lot. And so I think they've got a real tough time in finding their way through this path. I, I think every effort should be made to make this as clear to them as possible. I think law flows from good public policy and common sense. And I bet you that in the final analysis, this jury is going to have a conversation about does it make common sense that what happened here is something that you would convict a president on or not. I think one element is were there things done to influence an election. At one level, aren't all candidates supposed to be trying to influence the election. You know, I've said it before, but since Dr. Phil has moved away from Oprah, he's really been doing a lot of positive stuff with this platform. I mean, not only is he speaking out on important issues, but he started a network focused on what he's calling good common sense family values. And you can see how liberating it's been for him to break free from establishment media. Here he is speaking to Lonnie Combs about how the case against Trump really has the potential to muddy the waters for defining influence versus interference when it comes to elections. I came up with a phrase that I think is could be the turning point, And that is the difference between election influence and election interference. The crime is election interference. But they're saying, even if you believe all this other stuff, that the, the hush money was paid, that it was falsified, he was only trying to influence an election, which is what every candidate does, right? You give a rally, you do a debate, you pull out an ad, that's all to try and influence the outcome of the election. How do you get to interfere? So now they've made it a sliding scale between what's okay, inter influence, up to what the crime is supposed to be, interference, and that's a slight, where's the line? That's not clear. Well said, and something that's not often talked about on legacy media. It really seems like Democrats are playing a dangerous, vindictive game with these trials that has the potential to do a lot of damage to our current system of government. I mean, it never ceases to amaze me how they have the nerve to cry about decorum and civility and dangers to democracy while attempting to dismantle every single facet of those institutions. But let me know what you think. How will the case against Trump turn out? Let me know in the comments, and if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. That stuff really does help us out. Until then, this has been Nurk News. Thanks for watching. Bye!